We're urging all Boston residents, workers, and employees to take this storm very seriously as well. I'm asking everyone to do their part. Put public safety first. I am also um, declaring a snow emergency in the district effective at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. One of the largest blizzards in the history of New York City. I'm asking everyone to understand that and to prepare accordingly. This is not going to be like other snowstorms. It is going to be, by all indications, worse. We just heard in order, uh, though not geographical order, from the mayors of Boston and Washington, D.C. and New York City. As we note, the Northeast has been hit with larger than normal snowfalls thus far in 2015. And though we see wintry landscapes and feel the chilling temperatures, the scientific community basically lines up claiming that our activities are heating up temperatures on our planet. One person who does not share that opinion, in fact, he's got a significantly different opinion, is John Casey, the president of the Space and Science Research Corporation. John is also the author of the book Dark Winter, how the sun is causing a 30-year cold spell. And we welcome John to America's Forum. And likewise, we uh, thank uh, our friend Ford O'Connor, Ford O'Connell for staying with us from Newsmax, Washington. John Casey, as you sit in Orlando, Florida and ponder what is happening in the northeastern United States, why do you believe our climate is heading toward cooler uh, temperatures than warmer ones? J.D. and Ford, the answer to that is pretty straightforward. I think just about every American can now see that we've had uh, a series of brutal record-setting winters that are starting earlier, getting uh, staying longer, and breaking records that are 100, 150 years old. So clearly the, uh, the planet is getting colder. Uh, the warming community is, uh, has utterly failed in its climate models and its predictions about the climate. So we are facing some stark realities right now that uh, that say without doubt that we are heading into a new cold era. Well, the, the liberal media, John, is hell-bent on proving this global warming. And I see mag well-respected magazines like Time and Scientific America who say that 2014 was one of the hottest years on record. How do you combat that when I'm deal arguing with my liberal friends about this who tell me, oh my gosh, global, war global warming is occurring, it's the end of the world. How do I deal with that? I'm dying to know. Well, first off, we have to deal with the facts. Uh, if we look at the facts based on five major global temperature data sets that our company tracks and evaluates on a regular basis, we see that the uh, story of 2014 being the warmest year on record was, in fact, just a story. Uh, it is just another in a long line of statements by the president, by this administration regarding our climate that are simply not true. According to our analysis, using the best science and, and technical data available, 2014 was a warm year, an important year, but uh, merely another warm year in a string of years that have been essentially stable uh, for the last 18 years where there's been no effective growth in global warming. That's, that's a stark change from what we've been told, what we see on the evening news or read in our newspapers. But the reality is there's been no growth, no global warming for 18 years. On the contrary, our analysis shows the trend lines are definitely heading south. The planet is definitely getting colder. John, let's take a listen to what Wayne Higgins, the Climate Program Director at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, had to say, and then we'll get your reaction. You cannot link an individual extreme event, such as a northeast snowstorm, such as a cold air outbreak, such as a severe weather outbreak, to global warming. So where we've looked forward decades and even out to a century, uh, and 
Using those climate models with scenarios in which we actually ramp up the levels of greenhouse gases, we are able to confirm uh, that uh, human-induced climate change is something that is occurring now and that actually is likely to continue in the future. Uh, so, John, we hear that, and forgive me, in my non-scientific way, I kind of say garbage in, garbage out. You're telling us the cycles really depend on solar activity rather than any computer-driven models of greenhouse gases, correct? Uh, exactly. The, uh, the evidence and the data are, are fundamentally, uh, fundamentally clear. Let me go back to Mr. Higgins' comments. He's absolutely right that we should not be using a single event, for example, a, a record cold winter, as an indicator of a climate change. Uh, unfortunately, they use the same argument uh, to counter uh, opponents of man-made global warming. Uh, the reality is this isn't a single event. This isn't a single winter. Uh, we've had many winters now, again, that are record-setting winters, none of which, by the way, are supposed to be happening at all. We've been told by UN scientists that we're actually not even supposed to be having any snow, much less seven feet of snow in Buffalo, record thir uh, three feet or more snow in Boston. Second point is his comment that human-induced climate change exists. Uh, he's technically correct. However, the human component to climate change is so minuscule that it's almost insignificant. And moreover, we now know that the climate appears to be almost insensitive how much CO2 John, John, we got 30 really seconds there. left. I, I have a quick question. Should we be concerned about global cooling? And if so, is there anything that we can do about it short of, you know, humans walking around the earth? Well, uh, absolutely. We need to get informed. We need to get prepared. We need to recognize that history repeats. And if we go back and look at the last time these solar events brought a 30-year or 40-year or longer cold era, uh, that we can learn from that. We must accept, however, that the sun is really the most powerful force in the solar system, not humans on planet Earth, and that the sun is going into a deep hibernation for the next 30 years. There's nothing we can do about it. We need to learn about it. We need to adapt. And one way to learn about it is to check out the book Dark Winter by our friend John Casey. Check it out. Heck, why don't you buy it? And you can get your copy of Dark Winter by visiting Newsmax.com slash Dark Winter. In that case, Dark Winter is all one word. Got to tell you this, all the talk about the climate had me sneezing a second ago. I'm going to blow my nose as we step aside right now for this Newsmax Now update.